Welcome into the Boxing Day edition of Extra Time. Shaka Hissa. <laughs> Just enjoy the music. Really, it's Shaka? Extra music. Lovely, lovely dancing. <laughs> that that well, beautiful. He's still got it. No. Yeah. No. Practicing for your. Just introduce our guest, please. Practicing for your holiday. <laughs> introduce our guest, please. <laughs> We've got Frank LeBeuf and Jan Alfjotov. Uh, we do, Jan, Jan. Somehow mentioned Norway. <laughs> yeah. in extra time. Uh, but, but Jan is in Scotland, Jan. How, how has yes. your Scottish Christmas been? Fantastic. I mean, it's, it's the third year I, I celebrated here because my Marcus, my son, is playing here. So we're a whole family in Edinburgh. That is a fantastic Christmas uh, city. Oh, oh it's almost a, it seems genuine when he yeah, says it that. Does, as well. It does. It sounds very good. I do. We, we know a couple of Scotsmen yeah. who don't like Scotland. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and Frank Craig, Craig Burley. Uh, <laughs> Craig Burley wouldn't like Rachel. You know, in friends oh, in Edinburgh to... <laughs> and everything. How do we get Rachel and friends in every extra time? You will <laughs> still be grumpy. You will still really be need... grumpy. Uh, you really maybe need to see somebody about that. Uh, Frank, Rachel, the is I love you. Frank, am I right in saying this is your first Christmas as a granddad? Old granddad? Granddad? Oh. Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah, happy that, Christmas, that, granddad. That was my friend, my, my, my grandson didn't want to talk to me. You know, every time I was asking him something, he was, he was saying that. You yeah. don't want to see me. He only loves my wife and women. Ah, well, he's well, a French uh, guy. What can we do? I'm just moving on from that. Just move on from that. Start the new year in HR. Um, I saw that Conte and Kane's relationship is great, and that Conte told Kane that he was centre of his project with Spurs. Do you do you guys? Sorry, remember having instant chemistry with a new manager? or someone on the coaching staff, which led to an immediate improvement on your performance. Shaq, it's a goalkeeping coach. Huh? Let's see, I oh, well, say, say that. Les Lee was really good for me. Terry Geno as well right. at, at Newcastle. Um, I, I, both goalkeeping coaches. Obviously. Both goalkeeping coaches. And the dynamic of Terry was a little bit different in that we had, we had uh, John Burridge just before, but I felt Terry Geno coming in was just simply, he was simply, he was, exactly what I needed at, at that time. I only worked with him a year, for a year, sadly. Um, but then I, I moved on to West Ham and, and Les was, was fantastic for, for, for the three years that we worked together. Did you have bad goalkeeping coaches as well? Well, it, it, it's true because <laughs> when, I, when I started, goalkeeping coaches weren't really a thing. Not many clubs had full-time goalkeeper coaches. Really? Yeah, so Peter Bernetti was, was my goalkeeper coach at Reading. But he made his career by wow. doing one day a week at five different clubs. People didn't have full-time oh, wow. goalkeeping coaches on their books. So he would do, including Premier League, he would do Reading, he would also do Premier League So clubs. what would you do without him on the other days? Whatever the coach wanted you to do, just stand in goal and try to save shots as best you can. That'd be it. That, that'd be it. That would be, <laughs> that would absolutely be it. Wow. And, and this is not wow. just Reading in, in the lower divisions. Premier League clubs were the same. Peter Bernetti were with a couple of uh, Premier League clubs. And that, that really was it. And then I went to Newcastle and um, there was John Burridge, but he was still playing. <coughs> right. So he was, you know, worried about himself and then worrying about, about us as well. Sure. And then really the first dedicated goalkeeper coach was, was Terry Geno, which was my, my last year at, uh, at, at Newcastle, which I, I think was, yes, yeah, so that would have been 97, 98. It was the first time he had a dedicated, full time, I'm only doing coaching. Wow. Type of Frank, what about you? Did you have a rapport with a coach that, that made you better? Yes, two in fact. One in Strasbourg with Leon Aspec, uh, who I think no, no many people in my audience, uh, in our audience know. No, my he audience, used to be, uh, Freudian the, slip. The, the, yeah, it's all right, Frank, your show. Your, your audience, your audience, Dan. Mm -hmm. Your uh, audience. Carry on, uh, Frank, carry on, carry on. Uh, <laughs> He was, a, he was a central defender in Bordeaux and with the national team, absolutely fantastic uh, coach. And, and Ruth Gullit, I have to say that Ruth Gullit changed my life and, uh, and working with him was an absolute pleasure, like he wasn't for Craig Burley. How, how did he change your life? What did he do in particular, Frank, that made a difference to you and your game? Uh, just, just giving me the chance to, uh, to express myself the, one, the, the way I wanted to. Uh, going, uh, allowing me to go forward, you know, uh, and 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 uh, accepting the fact that uh, just only defending wasn't my type of uh, of the way I was th I was seeing my uh, my job. So he, he, he made people working defensively when I was going forward, and also giving me confidence and leadership immediately when I signed for both of them. Um, after after two or three weeks at Chelsea, I was already the vice captain. 
uh, and I shot and I, I took the penalty. It was Denis White the, the the penalty shooter? And I I I, I took uh, I took it over when I signed, and it was the same for Strasbourg. So when you 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 feel that confidence from the coach, and I, like I was talking about Lucas Moura, you fly. Really, yeah. you fly. What about you, Jan? Well, first of all, I would just want to say that Shaka was talking about Peter Bonetti and the young uh, viewers. They don't understand how fantastic goalkeeper he was. I have mm. to say that. The cap. Oh, yeah. Peter Bonetti, yeah. a legendary football keeper. Uh, but yes, I had it in yeah. Germany at the end of my career. I was 32. And we had a useless coach that we got in as a, as a, as a gap, gap coach. And he came in and it took his eight games to get rid of him. And then we got Jörg Berger. And Jörg Berger had a a reputation that some coaches have as a fireman, that they come in and save a club. And I le learned from that old experienced guy, and it's unfortunately dead now, uh, rest in peace, my friend. Uh, but he came in and I saw just the way he, he, he built up a credibility, that he talked to us, he, want, he saw us all the time, and, and he made us better, not only as a football players, but people who took responsibility for their own career. Like Frank is talking about Ruth Gullit, but as it's also a good point from Frank that some coaches work at some players and other doesn't work at all. Mm. So that is the uh, interesting part of it. Wow. Yeah. That's the first question. That's taken a long time. Yeah. <laughs> we could be here a while. Um, and it's <laughs> if Arsenal keep this young crop of players, Shaka, and bring world-class talent, do they stand a chance of being a title contender in the next two years? We, we've been having this that exact same conversation about Arsenal, I feel, for the last 10 or 15 years. That they have a good crop of players coming through. Next thing you know, players are out of contract and you, and you're having to do something silly to either try to, 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 to keep them and it just upsets. Um, everything about the balance in, in the dressing room. So, short answer to that is, is yes, but I, I, I just feel, given Arsenal's own track record in this regard, they'll find some way to mess it up. Jan, how true is it that Rafinha is going to buy in Munich? Uh, I, they were talking about 50 million euro, uh, and I see that is uh, that is everywhere. And uh, with the track record, uh, Bayern Munich have to sell players. They leave players, leave them for free, and they say they don't have a lot of money. I'm not sure that they put all the eggs in one basket. Uh, they have a good, fairly good track record of buying buying players in January. They have done that before, and they've been quite successful. Not many teams are in January, but I will uh, I will go for a 50-50 on that one. Frank, why do you think Premier League clubs don't want to vote for the five substitutions as it's the case in other top leagues in Europe right now? You can keep this quick, Frank. Yeah, can I read that? Because uh, you went too, too yeah, quick. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm in a bit rushed. I don't really care about the answer well, either. Well, I guess, I guess, I guess, yes, no, well, no, me neither, but uh, I will answer because I'm polite. Uh, Guardiola, I think, is fighting for that where he makes only one or two substitutions per game. So that makes no sense. Uh, but I think it would be a very good idea because it, 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 uh, it opens up the fact that uh, you can have fresh uh, uh, legs to, uh, to make the game better. So I don't have any problem with that. I think uh, it if it's possible, I would agree with that. And uh, hopefully the Premier League will change his mind. What's but the there's an argument against it, Dan. It's that yeah. the big teams, they could change the whole team where they have 15, 16 players on the same level. So they could take five new players out, fresh, world-class on the pitch. So I can understand that it's hard to get uh, a, a vote for it. What's the craziest wow. game the panel have been involved with? Doesn't necessarily have to be a high-scoring game, just a crazy, weird game in general. Obviously, I, I imagine off the back of that City game today, 4-0 up and it goes to 4-3. Have you been in something similar? I played uh, Newcastle-Leicester at St. James's Park. We were three down, 1-4-3 with an Alan Shearer hat-trick. From I mean, neck. It, that, was, that must be like one of the best yes, feelings, like those yes, sort of comebacks. Yes, but, I, but and of course I played in one of the three back-to-back. -back the four threes at Anfield. At, at Anfield, yes. I played in one. We lost. Uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, what about you, Jan? Well, not uh, the same level as Shaka is talking about in terms of teams, but I remember back in in Austria, we were 2-0 up away in Innsbruck, and they had the magic coach of Ems Tuffel, one of the best coaches ever. Uh, we were 2-0 up, uh, 70 minutes. We, they got a man sent off and we lost 3-2, and I don't, still don't understand how that's possible, but that, that unfortunately happens then again. Wow, Jan, as much as you bring up Rachel from French, you also bring up the fact that you scored the goal that kept Eintracht Frankfurt up. 
yet you haven't brought that up on this question, which I thought was just a softball for you to answer. Yeah, but that, that, that was a crazy game, but it was, that was a crazy game, but it was nearly more crazy, the thing that happened in there, because they were they'd ending up with a team like Nürnberg going down, and they wanted to have a party to stay off, and they bought in 100,000 sausages, 200,000 beers, ready to celebrate, and I, and I scored that goal to make they'd go down. So I'm not very popular in Nuremberg, so I should have brought that up. Sorry about that. What did they do with the sausages? Uh, they probably ate it anyway. I mean, the Germans, they will never say no to uh, some sausage. <laughs> sausage and beer. I'd love it if someone was just switching on right now. <laughs> uh, Frank, what about you? Craziest game? Uh, yeah, you have to know that in France, the only uh, way to see the English games were the, through the FA Cup. And my first year at Chelsea, we played uh, against Liverpool at Stamford Bridge. And it was a very much English weather, lots of rains and all the, 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 the pitch was awful. And we were losing 2-0 half time. And Rugelit made a change and put Mark Hughes on. And uh, Mark changed the game and we won 4-2. I mean, that was awesome. Crazy English game, full of drama and uh, suspense. And uh, you have to know that McManaman, Fowler, uh, Berger uh, were at front against us. Absolutely fantastic team. Uh, and Mike, I think uh, Owen as well. Fantastic team from Liverpool. And we beat them 4 in the first year. And we won the FA Cup after that. It was a quarterfinal of the FA Cup. Fantastic <laughs> yeah. game. FA Cup, Lovely. English game, yeah. great game. Yeah, sausages for everyone. Um, speaking of the English weather, Shaka, <laughs> yeah. on the cold and rainy fixtures like those on Boxing Day, how do you as a keeper stay warm without the benefit of having to run up and down the pitch for 90 minutes? Take, take the ball out of the net. <laughs> 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 that helps. Um, you, you just kind of you run around in your box as best you can. Do you? Yeah, you just once you once you get warm and you keep yourself going, it's okay. You right. you cope. You yeah. cope. The hard part, obviously, is leaving the dressing room before the game. Did and you ever wear tights yeah. or long johns or anything like that? Um, I, I did at Reading when I when I first started playing English football and, and there were times I, I really struggled with, with the weather. I remember there was one game in particular, um, away to Barnet, it was absolutely freezing, the wind was howling and I, it, it was it, it was the worst I've, I've ever felt playing, playing a game of football. But once I got to Newcastle, I stopped. I, there's only one picture of me wearing tights in a Newcastle kit and I was away to Barcelona. The pitch was, the feet, <laughs> the feet was, was, was like really sandy. So we right. warm up the day before and it was really gritty and, and just diving on the grass, it just, it tore my legs to shreds. Wow. And, and so I, I wore track bottoms in the game. It wasn't cold, it, it was lovely and warm, but my legs were just shredded. But so once I started at Newcastle, I'd never worn track bottoms other than that time till the end. How did you get on against Barcelona? We lost 1-0. Oh. Shaka. Yes? What was the name of the guy, the, the goalkeeper, uh, you know, of Eta Berlin? And I'm sure Ian yeah, knows yeah, as yeah. well. He, he, already he was already wearing awful, the worst the gray traction ones, yeah. bottom that we, we ever seen. I played on the Champions League against him. What yes. was his name? Gabor was he at Palace for a bit? Shaka. What was his name? No. I think it was Gabor Karali or something. Yeah, he, he, was something. At, he was at but Palace he for a wear, bit, wasn't he? Karai? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. But he, and he didn't wear a track suit. He made like a jogging suit. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't, no. wasn't goalkeeper yeah. bottom. That was it wasn't goalkeeper bottom. Horrible. Yeah. Horrible. <laughs> yeah. um, were any of you sold or released by clubs you've represented during the Tranery transfer window? No. No? Jan? Yes, that was sold during the uh, January transfer window. But at that time, it was... Uh, it was going. It went to end of or beginning of March, but I was sold to uh, from Swindon Town to Middlesbrough Football Club oh. uh, at the end uh, on the uh, on the transfer deadline day. Yeah, so I did. Uh... Frank. Yes, my first uh, club Laval. I was sold to Strasbourg in November. I don't know why. We've had enough of you, What's Frank. What's yeah. oh, okay. Two months is enough. Uh, You're off. Frank, would you rather face <laughs> yeah, a strong yeah. and physical forward like Lukaku or a more technical forward like Messi? Oh, goodness. Mm. Oh, wow. 
I think I will pick uh, Lukaku <laughs> uh, because I think he can be humiliated by uh, Messi. Well, Lukaku, you can say, well, the guy is too strong, you know, too powerful, I can't do <laughs> yeah. anything. But Messi, Good point. Yeah, you know, it's like uh, you are ridiculous uh, in front of that guy. You're a tall guy and the guy does everything, uh, some tricks around you and you look ridiculous. So, no, no, I will go with Lukaku. That's fine by me. Frank, who is the slowest striker you've ever played with or against and why is it Jan? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I am better. I am better. I played. I played with Chris Sutton, and uh, he signed from uh, Blackburn, Blackburn Rovers to uh, to Chelsea for for 15 million, one five million, well, 15 million euros a pound. Sorry, and I remember you know every training session you know. <laughs> uh, Dennis was saying, did we keep the coupon? <laughs> 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 to sell him back. <laughs> wow. wow. And, uh, and uh, no, but uh, no, but it was just a joke, you know, and we had fun. But it was it was really slow. It was, and I think it was slower than Ian for sure. <laughs> <laughs> just a joke, but it was slow and pretty yeah, rubbish. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we yeah. did waste some money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I say I say the same as Johan Cruyff. If you have to sprint, you're too late. Ah, oh, <laughs> there you are. Shaka. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jimmy Quinn at Reading when I when I first started. Right. But um, oh yeah. But but Jimmy was an incredible finisher, especially at that level. Good goal scorer. Good goal incredible scorer. goal scorer. So that would have been. Well, what second and first division then, what is now League One League Championship now. Unbelievable goal scorer at that level. Final question, will Shaka consider changing his algorithm for his top 10 power rankings in 2022? No, I think the algorithm has no. has proven <laughs> yes, it's it's gotten better with with time. There would have to be some sort of algorithm in the first place. For it to no, be I'm, I'm just saying. As opposed to <laughs> By the way, minutes. I remember I remember my favorite Christmas movie to the last extra time we were oh, doing. Oh, good, Shag. I was thinking about it, Dad, because I was I was really bothered. Okay, Elf. Yes, Elf is Elf, Elf is my is favorite splendid, Christmas movie. Very good. Yeah, that's that's a good. So I've been I've been waiting to see it, Dan. I've been. Thinking about you all, all during my Christmas. Wow. Just so I could tell you that, Dan. Beautiful one. Well, thank you very much and a good choice. Uh, that is it. <laughs> we are done. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, we will be back thank tomorrow you. for more, of course, to reflect on Newcastle against Manchester United. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.